tractors carrying the Ford name have shaped the face of mechanized agriculture for nearly a hundred years. From the beginnings of mass production with the Model F, Ford's and N's contribution to the Second World War effort, curved new styling and the addition of the famous Ferguson system hydraulics to tempt the increasingly important farming community, and eventually Ford taking on the world with the introduction of the 1000 series. Building on from its past successes, Ford kept evolving, offering farmers even more model choices and additional power. But changes were afoot, and in the 1990s, the familiar Ford name badge was replaced with that of New Holland as Fiat took over the company. But to the present day, most of the New Holland tractors are still built in the original Basildon factory, first opened by Ford in 1964. This program is the story of the final two decades of Ford tractors and the New Holland brand that took over. Surely a farm machinery legend if ever there was one. The 4610 was powered by a three-cylinder Ford engine, producing 64 horsepower, and was a powerful machine for its size. It was also available with factory-fitted four-wheel drive. The smallest tractor in the 10 series was the 44 horsepower 2610, also fitted with a three-cylinder motor. Although the Coup cab was still the top spec workplace, two other cabs were also offered from 1982, both built for Ford by Sakura. The AP, or all-purpose cab, was a cheaper alternative to the Ford Q version, while the LP, or low profile cab, was ideal for livestock farmers needing access to low buildings. The 700 series range of longer wheelbase tractors also became part of the 10 series. The 7710 shared the same engine and mechanicals as the 7610, but had its gear levers positioned to the right of the driver's seat, leaving a flat and uncluttered cab floor. Like the smaller tractors, the 7710 was also available with four-wheel drive, supplied by ZP Axle, but also gave a very tight 51 degree turning angle, despite this tractor's larger size. This 7710 is still in regular use on a Sussex stock farm and was once the farm's prime mover, along with an older 7700. There's getting towards 200 acres of grassland which we own and also rent. So, um, we spread over quite an area, that's the only problem. When I left school, we always had Fordsons on the farm, and come out from school sort of thing. We, we used to go up with Farmer Dad and the Fordsons and the old Fordson Majors and uh, when I started to drive the Fordson Dexter, you know, it was a very nice tractor. It had one of the old Lambourne weatherproof cabs on it, which was quite nice. It did flap about a bit in the wind, but never mind. Then we um, slowly moved on up the scale to the Ford 4000. It's a very nice tractor. It's quite a big tractor for our farm at the time. Poor old tractor, she had that engine problem which all them early 4000s used to have. And something was put wrong in the engine, it blew the side of the engine out. So that was after about a week of being brand new. So uh, that had to go back, and uh, they brought an old Fordson Power Major out for us to play with. Smoked and leaked diesel everywhere, but never mind. <laughs> but uh, after that, we moved on to, well, that was sold off, and we bought a Ford Force 4000. That went off after about three years, and then we had the new safety cab, the Ford safety cab on the Ford 4000. 
and then over the years we've run Ford 5000 which is a wonderful tractor and um, that was a nice tractor and 75 horsepower two-wheel drive tractor and uh, I was going off plowing with it one day and uh, just after dinner we got half of his bank and all the smoke started belching out from under the steering column.